Hello and welcome to The Knit Shift. My name is Lara and today is May 25th, 2018 and this is episode 107. Thank you so much for stopping by today, whether uh, you and I have hung out before or this is your first visit to The Knit Shift. I know there's a ton of knitting podcasts out there and there's not a lot of time in the day. Everyone has 24 hours in the day, just like Beyonce as the saying goes, but um, there's limited time to watch podcasts for a lot of folks, so I really do appreciate you choosing to spend a little bit of your time with me. If you're new here, I am a journalist in, um, I almost said Southeast Virginia because that's where I lived for so long. I live in the Washington DC area now. I have for almost a year. I work at a large media organization and I live with my dog Gracie, who you can see just over my left shoulder. Um, just chilling on the couch and um, the blanket that she sleeps on I washed it today so it's nice and warm so she has even more motivation to be sleeping on the couch and it's me and Gracie and a lot of yarn and my boyfriend Josh last but certainly not least so um, I try to share a little bit of my life as a journalist mostly though this is about knitting so thank you for being here today fellow yarn people Show notes can be found at thenitshift.com. This episode is available on iTunes and YouTube and will be embedded at the blog. I'm on Ravelry as Yarnstormer. I'm on Instagram as Laura Mahalski. And if you go to Ravelry and search for The Knit Shift, you will find us. Still don't have any knit along plans, you guys. I need to just buckle, buckle down. Is it buckle up or buckle down? I think it's buckle down and do it. Buckle up is when you get in the car. I work with words for a living. I should know this, right? Um, so I've been I've been doing a bit of knitting. It's mostly the commute knitting that you guys are used to. A lot of sock knitting. Um, have had a lot going on outside of the knitting life. Um, since we last spoke, I went to Maryland Sheep and Wool, and that was amazing. And I'll talk about it later. And I got to go to a really awesome event in New York City. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen it already, but I got to go to the Peabody Awards, which are an award ceremony that recognizes excellence in storytelling through, it started as a radio um, award show, expanded to news, documentaries, TV shows at some point. And something I worked on at my job won a Peabody. So. I got to go and that was amazing. I never thought I was gonna get to go to something like that, but I'll save, we'll talk more about that later. Let's get to the knitting first and foremost. Um, so it's been about three weeks. I recorded really quickly the Friday night um, before Maryland Sheep and Wool because I had gone to a trunk show at my local yarn shop and I did a little quick hit video about what I purchased there, but it, I didn't show you guys any knitting progress, so I've got quite a bit to share with you. I hope I, I have all of my stuff spread out on the table, so I've got my whips, I've got some FOs, I have some stash enhancement courtesy of Maryland. I've got a lot to talk about today, so let's get right to it. Um, Oh, and um, I do plan one more bit of administrative stuff. I do plan on attending the Frederick, Frederick Fiber Fest next weekend in um, Frederick, Maryland. I'm trying to convince my boyfriend to come. He's never been to a sheep and wolf type festival, so we'll see if that happens. Um, but I'm really excited to go check it out and, you know, just kind of see what it's about because I've never been to it. But now I'm local, so that's pretty cool. So let's get to the FOs, shall we? Um, I have... I don't know if it counts as two. Um, I've got a few finished pair of socks, but one pair is lacking its heels because they're afterthought heels, but I still feel like they count as almost FOs. So here's my first FO. These are socks that I worked on. Um, these are Opal Rendezvous. These were a gift. This yarn was a gift from my friend Casey. And I knit these socks. I knit these. I started this pair of socks before I went to see Black Panther. So I think of them as my Black Panther socks because that was where I made a ton of progress on them. So they took over a month, I want to say. These are Afterthought heels. Um, the Susan, these are smooth, Susan B. Anderson's Smooth Operator sock heel. They're not perfect. This is my first time using this heel. You can see it's definitely kind of gappy and kind of, kind of wonky here, but that's okay. It, it fits my heel just fine. Um, I used size one needles. I did my usual toe up knitting. I cast on at the toe and carried on up the foot. Um, put waist yarn in for the afterthought heel 
and carried on up the leg and did quite a bit of two by two ribbing. So these are nice and tall. I'm really happy with how these turned out. They match pretty well, which is great. The heels don't, which I kind of like making the heels mismatching when I try to um, do an afterthought heel with self-striping yarn. I think that's kind of fun. So um, yeah, this is great. I think this is my, I don't know what number pair of socks this is this year, probably fourth or fifth, I wanna say, but I can't remember for sure. So that's one pair done. The next pair I will also put on the um, sock blockers. Again, even though they lack heels, they are technically tube socks, so they can just kinda go wherever. Also, I wanna tell you guys, I'm finding that if I don't edit the video as much, I feel more likely to record more often. I don't know if you guys know this, but editing podcasts takes a ton of time. Like two plus hours each time I record. Just that's beyond the time it takes to film. And if if I can keep it short and sweet and ha keep minimal cuts and all that, you know, because I just cut out the time I took to put the socks on the sock blocker, for example, you didn't see that, but I had to trim that out. I if I can keep the the cutaways to a minimum. I feel like I'll be more likely to record more often because it takes less time. And that does mean the quality of my videos will go down a little bit. But I, for me, that's a trade-off I'm willing to make. Um, hopefully, we'll see if it changes the number of subscribers. But, um, you know, but, but everyone does ums and uhs, and I try to edit those out as much as possible. But it takes so much time, and I think I will. I would rather be less of a perfectionist in order to record a little bit more. So that's my two cents. Let me know what you guys think. Um, be honest, you know, if you really like the highly polished edits, I'm all ears. I will take it all under consideration, but yeah, let me know. So here is my next pair of socks. These are socks that need heels. You can see I've got the afterthought yarn, or the waist yarn in for the afterthought heel. Again, this is just a toe up sock and I will use Susan B. Anderson's smooth operator heel. Um, this, <coughs> pardon me, this yarn is online super sock desert color 1856. Um, it's a wool nylon blend. I knit these on a size zero because it was quite thin. I really like this yarn. It looks kind of like hand spun. You know, you can see how mottled it is. I really love the yellow to orange to peachy bits. That's my favorite part of the whole sock. Especially in the toe where it's a quite a quick transition. Um, but yeah, again, this is another pair where I was able to get them to match pretty closely. I think these are my fifth or sixth pair of the year. I knit the legs pretty tall. Um, so I think what I'm going to do different with this pair versus the last is I'm going to knit these heels two at a time because the last sock, I knit one sock, put the heel in, knit one sock, put that heel in. And I think that if I knit the heels together, I'll have a better chance of doing it right. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So that is another pair of socks. Those were uh, those were a big pair of commute socks. Both of both of those, but really mostly the ones I just showed you. I knit on almost exclusively on my commute to and from work. Um, some of my shifts at work have moved up to be a little bit earlier. I do work afternoons and evenings, but I've been able to move up to a slightly earlier shift, which means I can take the train more often um, because the train does not operate super late at night. The metro system in DC, I can't always drive to work. So, or I can't always take the train to work. I have to drive instead. So with these earlier shifts, I can take the train and that means I get more knitting time, which is really what it's all about, right? So my next FO is a half finished object and I will put that on my sock blocker too. Okay, so here is my half object. This is Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock Lightweight. So it's 100% merino, no nylon content. And this is the colorway, I believe it's called that 70s skein. This was a gift from my friend Lennis, who lives back in Virginia Beach. She bought it for me when I was struggling with some stuff and really in a funk and this showed up in the mail as a surprise and it was just the nicest treat ever so um 
I decided to cast it on and just use some pretty yarn from a friend. So I really love this. I feel like this yarn looks like the Scooby-Doo gang and the mystery machine all wrapped into one, all of their outfits and the, the, you know, the groovy colors on the van. Socks at Rock gives you that beautiful, beautiful stitch definition and I just think it's so pretty. Um, I haven't knit a pair of socks out of so Socks at Rock in quite some time but I'm kind of eager to see how these will hold up because the colorways have not been um, the socks that I own that are Socks at Rock. The soles of the feet have not held up color-wise as much. They kind of have faded a little bit along the foot where you, um, you know, you have a lot of stress on the foot from walking. So I'll be eager to see how these hold up. This is my general toe-up recipe. This is not an afterthought heel. This is a fish lips kiss heel. And I did this my standard recipe. I did, I cast on like, I don't know, 20, 32, 36, something like that. I did not um, increase to my normal like 64 stitches. This yarn is quite thick. I only went to 56 stitches for the foot. And then I knit, um, I did a fish lips kiss heel. And then, then I knit 20 rounds of stockinette and then I increased four stitches evenly spaced. So here, 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 and then in the middle here. And I went to 60 stitches to um, accommodate my, my leg because you know, the leg can get a little wider than the ankle and the foot. So um, you can kind of see how the striping changed a little. The stripes are thicker here and then they're thinner here after I did the increases, which is always fun. And then I ended with good old two by two rib. You can see I have not woven in the ends yet. Got this little piece hanging out. So this is my commute project right now and I am very far in sock number two. In fact, I have about 10 more rows and then I will be ready to do the heel. And I'm gonna work on this later today because Josh and I might go see Solo, the Star Wars movie tonight. And I would like to be beyond the heel turn so that I can just knit, knit in the round on the sock um, uh, during the movie. And you know, it's the, the dark. I don't wanna have to turn the heel in the dark. So I am right about here on the sock. So yeah, here I'll show you the cake. This is how much I have left, plenty of yarn. It's like a generous, I think 405 yards is the cake, is the skein. And I'm carrying this in like, this bag could not be more perfect. This is a little dumpling bag that I got from um, a yarn shop in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And the maker does not make them anymore, which makes me sad because this is one of my favorite project bags of all time. Let's see, I'm gonna just move that to the side. I have two more works and two more works in progress to share with you beyond the sock I just showed you. One is a continuation of something I showed you before, but I have started it over fresh. So two episodes ago, I told you I was crocheting a blanket for a friend who's getting married in the fall. I got pretty far in it, but I made it freaking enormous, you guys. Look at how big this is. It can cover me. It can cover a friend. It could cover like a third person in bed. It's like bigger than, they have a double bed and I wanted to make it double bed sized. I made it for like a king size bed. And the whole time I was going, I was like, each row took forever. And I was like, you're never gonna finish this before October. You're never gonna finish it. Why are you still going? You need to just cut your losses. So that's what I did. I, I was already, I, beyond what I just showed you, I had gone like three or four rows into the next color. Um, I'm, new, I'm doing gray, white, and a little bit of yellow. And um, I just ripped out the white, didn't feel like, like ripping out the gray, and just started fresh with a new ball of gray. So that's what I did. So I knit this, so I've, I'm crocheting this um, with a size H hook. It's, an, uh, it's a US 8, aka a five millimeter. And this size is much more manageable, both for me and for their, their bed. So here's how wide it is. In fact, I can probably, I can practically hold it up all in the camera on one. It's basically the size, it's like a snuggle size blanket for a couple because it is wider than it is for, it needs to be for one person, but two people can snuggle underneath it. It's like the perfect couch blanket. So um, it's a little narrower than I would like, but I'm really kind of okay with that because it will move a lot faster. And like I said, they're getting married. It's a snuggle blanket. It's love, lovey-dovey and all that kind of stuff. So I'm using Karen Simply Soft. Um, I have a gray color, I have a white color, and I have like two skeins of gold. So I only have a gray one handy, but this is, 
Got it at a local Michaels, nothing too fancy. So I'm plugging away at that. And my last work in progress is a shawl I've started um, for my trip to New York to go to the Peabody. So the Peabody's were held in, in New York City in lower Manhattan. So I wanted a project for my trip. So I'm carrying this in a bag that my friend M made me, Emily, and I love that it has my name. This was a birthday gift and I love it so much. And this is the Lighthouse Shawl by Janina Kaleo. I've knit her designs before. In fact, we did a um, knit along for the Antarctica Shawl a couple years ago on this podcast. And that's another design by her. So I don't have a photo of the shawl handy. Um, it calls for, uh, this is designed as a two color shawl. <coughs> Pardon me. But I'm using only one color. Basically, it's a crescent-shaped shawl, and there are columns of garter stitch with eyelets in between. And it's kind of hard to see. If I hold it upside down, you'll be able to see the crescent shape a little bit better. And then there's like a lace edging that's a simple yarn over, knit two together kind of lace, eyelet lace. So I'm knitting this all in one color. I have two balls of dirty water dye works. This is a the Lillian Lux base and it's a wool silk blend. And it's if you can believe it or not, this is my first time knitting with wool silk. I've never knit with silk before and it's really lovely. And the colorway is Cool Waters. I got this at Rhinebeck. Um, and I'm, I don't know what size needle I'm using, like a six or a seven, I wanna say. So it's a very simple pattern. I've not gotten too far in it. I'm hoping to knit on it a little bit this weekend. While it is a holiday weekend in the United States, I do not have a long weekend because my job is the kind that I usually have to work on holidays, which no big deal, I don't mind. Um, especially I don't mind for the big holidays like Christmas and things like that. Like if people have little kids and you know, I'd rather, I'd rather be at work so that they can be with their family. I don't have kids, you know, my family, I, I don't travel a ton for the holidays and I know I will want to do it at some point when my niece is a little older, but for now, especially because I'm new there, I'm super fine with working on holidays. So, um, so that is it for my works in progress. So let us chat for a few moments about Maryland Sheep and Wool because I have a very modest haul from um, my trip to Maryland Sheep and Wool. I went on my own and met up with some of my um, local friends who live in the vicinity and they brought their toddlers and the toddlers looked at the sheep and the goats and it was really cute and fun. And I mostly just kind of wanted to wander. I wasn't looking, I was looking for like two things. I looked for my slippers, which I am wearing right now. I'll pull up one and show you. Um, these are handmade slippers from the booth Shepherd's Flock and they are Sherling slippers and they are, they are very nice. Um, they're not, they don't have like a super hard bottom, but they are, they're soft bottom. Um, but they are so nice. I had to get a men's medium because I have enormous feet and I love them. So, um, yeah, he, he's based somewhere in New England, I want to say, and he's going to retire in a few years. And like all my friends rave about his slippers and are like buying some at each festival so that they can like have them for years in case no one takes over his business. And I totally, I didn't buy them at Rhinebeck. Um, and I regretted it all fall and winter when my feet were cold on my tile floor. My regular slippers, I was just like, these are all right, but I could be wearing really nice slippers. So these were like $65. They were not cheap, but it was really the only thing I really wanted at Rhinebeck. The other thing I wanted was like one skein of yarn. I, I didn't care from where, but I just wanted to come home with one skein of yarn. And I did. So this is one of my favorite dyers. This is Marigold Jen. And I love her yarn. This colorway is, this is a BFL base. It's 80-20 BFL nylon. The colorway is kaleidoscope. Sorry, I was seeing who was pulling up outside my apartment. And you guys know I love me some rainbow colors. So these are, this is pretty great. I wish it would focus. There we go. So really, really fun. Really happy with that. Um, they are, I've bought yarn from their booth for three or four 
Maryland Sheep and Wolves over the years. I have not been to Maryland Sheep and Wolf for this was my first trip in I think two or three years, um, but I usually stop by her booth and buy something. The other thing I got, um, fiber yarn wise, was I did get a braid of fiber. And yes, I still have not learned to spin on my spinning wheel that I got a year and a half ago. I know, this is crazy, but I'm waiting for the classes to come up at, there's a, there's like an art school in Alexandria where I live, and I am going to wait for a beginner's spinning class to show up on the schedule, and if it works with my work schedule, I'm taking it, like I cannot wait. But there's no summer classes, I have to wait for the fall schedule. So I got this at Hobbledehoy, which is the sister booth to Marigold Gen, I think they're mother and daughter. Um, and this is a Polworth silk top, 8515. The colorway is cliffhanger. And I just thought this, I'm in a kind of a cool neutral, I know this isn't neutral, but I'm kind of in a cool pastel frame of mind lately. And I just thought this was so pretty. So that's really nice. And um, I bought myself a few, I wanted some more stitch markers, got those at a booth. And the other thing I really needed and was on my list besides the slippers was a spinning wheel maintenance kit, like oil and a new drive band and things like that. Brake band, um, flyer hooks, um, tension, tension springs, really the oil and the new um, drive band are what I really wanted. So um, yeah, this was, I purchased at a random booth at the, at the, at the um, festival. So. That, those were my Maryland Sheep and Wool purchases. Um, and that brings me to going to the Peabody's in New York um, only a week ago. I left um, a week ago Saturday, so six days ago. I went up on Saturday and I came home Sunday, so quite a whirlwind. Um, I had a train ticket and I was in line to board the train. Like I was so close to leaving Saturday morning and we hear that the train has been delayed. And then I do a little recon searching Twitter and I found out there was a train derailment south of DC, um, not too far from where I live actually. There was a freight train that derailed. And that meant, I, I presume that the train that I was on, would have been on, was further south and was behind the derailment and just wasn't gonna come on. So, wasn't gonna make it here. So I kind of panicked because I had a very small window of time to get to New York, get to my hotel, get ready, and um, go to this event. And um, so I, I ended up, long story short, I got on a Bolt bus, um, which is one of those like discount bus lines. Um, Greyhound would have taken too long. Megabus didn't leave till like 10 or 10.30, would have gotten me there at like three or 3.30. So Bolt bus left at 9.30 and this was like 10 after nine. So I, I was just, I could have kissed the driver. I was so happy to see him. So grateful it was an option. I had a really nice seat made on the bus. The bus has plugs so you can charge your phone, which is great. Um, really, that's all I'm looking for is for a comfy seat and a phone charger that works. Um, that's all I want from a, a long trip. So my seatmate was going to see Benedict Cumberbatch perform in a play in New York that night. So, um, and I couldn't help but tell her I was just... So my camera just cut me off and I'm not sure where I was in the story, but um, I'll just say I made it to New York on time. It worked out great. Um, I was so relieved and thankful for the bus. And the other thing I'll say is I had no expectation of going. I was thrilled for my coworkers when I found out that they won because the Peabody's are something that is announced ahead of time. And I just, it never entered my mind that in my job as a copy editor, I might be invited to go, except I was. There was room at the table and they invited a few of the other folks who played a role in this stories, um, not the Genesis, but in the production of it. And I was so thrilled and honored, and it will forever be one of my favorite memories of my time um, here at The Post, because, like, in what world does a copy editor get to go to a fancy award show? I mean, I walked the red carpet with my coworkers, um, did, took photos with, it was a story we worked, we collaborated, well, I didn't collaborate, it was my colleagues collaborated with 60 Minutes on, so I was in the photos with the 60 Minutes people, and it was just kind of unbelievable. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen like, I, I just, I didn't want to tell people about it ahead of time because I just really didn't believe I was going. 
it just didn't feel like it was real until I actually got there. And it was amazing and wonderful, and so I got fancy shoes for the occasion. I went to Sephora for makeup help, kind of got like a glam makeover, but like I wanted it to be accessible glam that I could reproduce myself at home, and the makeup artist was so wonderful and helpful. And um, got my hair trimmed, I got, my nails are still done, it's a gel manicure so my nails stuck around. Like I, I went all out, like I was like I'm, I'm gonna enjoy this while I can because this opportunity doesn't come around too often. So I was so thrilled to be there and just so like over the top excited, like and when I called my parents to tell them that I had been invited. My, my mom was like, I can hear that you're shaking. Like, I was literally shaking as I told her and she could hear it in my voice. I was just so stunned and shocked and very grateful that my role was being, like, they, like, just being thanked for your job as a copy editor is plenty of recognition, you know, because we're, we're behind the scenes people. But then to be invited to something like this is truly, truly wonderful. So I'm so glad I got to go. There were lots of celebrities on the on the red carpet and at the ceremony, but I was tried to keep it together and keep it cool and, you know, but like there's Neil Patrick Harris taking his photos five feet from us, you know, that kind of thing. And um, if you watch the, if you watch the, um, is it The Adventures? The Fabulous Life of Mrs. Maisel, the something something of Mrs. Maisel, I'm blanking on it right now. Um, the cast of that was there. Um, the husband, the guy who plays the husband, the wife, um, Carol Burnett received a Lifetime Achievement Award. Just, I won't go, I won't list everyone, but it was really lovely. I didn't meet any celebrities. I'm kicking myself because Alexis Bledel, who was Rory Gilmore, which I didn't really watch, um, and she is on The Handmaid's Tale right now and doing amazing work. She walked right by me, and I wasn't even paying attention, but I was like, oh, that dress is really pretty. And then, sorry, there's a dog running outside my apartment and it's super cute and I'm distracted. Um, this beautiful, this woman in a beautiful dress walk right by me and I should have thought, oh boy, that dress is be I thought that dress is beautiful, but I should have put two and two together and thought, boy, that's a fancy dress. It was cocktail attire. I should have put two and two together and thought, like actually looked above and seen that it was a celebrity and I would have been like, oh, you're amazing on the show, oh my God, I love, you know, like, cause she's, she's doing such amazing work right now and I had literally watched the most recent episode the day before the ceremony and here she is stand walking right by me but I totally blanked on it, so. But that's fine because I'm not someone who wants to bother anyone even at an event like that, so. Um, anyway, it was great, it was a very fast trip to New York. Um, and kind of, not best of all, but it, it wrapped up by like 9, 9.30. And I didn't eat all day with all of my train and bus adventure, so I ate dinner at the ceremony, but I was still hungry, so I ordered some pizza del delivery to my hotel room, and I was asleep by like 10.30, and I slept so well. I was so exhausted because I had gotten up really early to watch the royal wedding that day um, before my train trip, and I didn't sleep well anyway because I was so excited. So it was just a, a really fun weekend, but I'm glad to be home and glad to not be um, traveling this weekend. But I, th I think my big takeaway is that um, the red carpet is not for me. It's kind of intimidating, and it's you know, you, I, I, I made sure I like had a pose down, you know, ready to pose in my, in my fancy dress, but I just, it's kind of intimidating to walk the red carpet. Um, thankfully we weren't interviewed because then that would be like being on the other side of things as a journalist. Um, but copy editors, we are, I'm very much a behind the scenes person and, um, that's where I like to be, behind the scenes. So that being said, I'm so grateful I got to go and I'm so glad my colleagues were recognized and um, yeah, that's that's the, the long and the short of it. So um, that's about all I have to share this week. I, I will say I can share a lipstick of the week right now. Um, I went to my local Rite Aid, yeah, it's a Rite Aid, to get some cough medicine because I've been I'd been fighting a cough for like a month. And it just so happens the Rite Aid was, is going out of business. It's closing in like a week or two. And so all the makeup was 50% off. So I did a little damage. Um, I bought a ton of stuff, but I will save other lipsticks for next time. But I will tell you that I'm wearing one of the lipsticks I bought right now. And it's, it's a reddish tone, but it's, I feel like it's pretty natural. It's not too over the top. And this is Revlon, no it's L'Oreal, L'Oreal Color Riche, and the color is Classic Wine, 752. 
yeah, that's not going to focus, is it? Um, but I'll show you the what's, what it looks like. So it's almost a little bit of a burnt red. It's kind of got a little bit of a warm undertone, and I'm definitely cool toned, but I think it works for me, right? So that is the lipstick chat of the week, and I think that's it for me. I've shown you all my whips. I've shown you my purchases. I filled you in on the Peabody, so um, yeah, that's what I've been up to lately. So thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for watching if you've made it this far, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. Bye!